Foreign Minister Baerbock and Elena, Ambassador Ackerman, dear friends. Let me begin by saying what a great pleasure it is to share my views on the subject of India, Germany, and a changing world. And let me come directly to the point, because I understand time is at a premium. Now, most of you would be familiar with India in some manner. You may or may not have served there, visited there, but you would have a broad sense of it. But allow me to give you a brief description, because India has changed enormously in the last decade. It is today a near $4 trillion economy that has 8% growth prospects for decades further to come. Where the pace of infrastructure growth is reflected in eight new airports and one to two new metro systems built annually. Where 28 kilometers of highway and 12 kilometers of railway track are laid daily. Its embrace of digital technologies is creating a public infrastructure on a massive scale. It has enabled, uh, in the last decade, a housing program that has benefited about 170 million people, a health coverage of 660 million, and loans that are given annually to 58 small businesses. India records the highest digital financial transactions in the world, which are currently about 13 billion each month. It has the third largest startup ecosystem with 117 unicorns. Now, in addition to this, I want to stress that its human resources are also being transformed. Universities and colleges have virtually doubled in the last 10 years. There are more than 1,600 global capability centers in India uh, that generate about $120 billion worth of business every year. The relevance of Indian talent to global workplace is visible in so many services and professions and driving a global interest in concluding mobility agreements with us. This is now an India of moon landings and a mass mission, a prolific manufacturer of vaccines and medicines, increasingly important to the global semiconductor industry and to contract engineering. Now, having said that, let me also be clear that there is much for us to do and a lot for us to grow. Recognizing this, the Modi government, early in its third term, has already embarked on a number of important initiatives. We plan to create 12 new industrial zones across the country to boost manufacturing. Uh, accelerating skills development is a major focus. New logistics initiatives will target ports, highways, and railroads, and our aviation industry is set for a major expansion. Now, in all of this, foreign policy matters. It matters because global technology, resources, and best practices can make a big difference to our future. When India engages Germany and the European Union, this is a key consideration. For partners like you, it could mean both expanding markets and reliable supply chains. But there is a larger picture as well. Whether it is green and clean energy, sustainable urbanization, or new and emerging technologies, our cooperation contributes to a better world. As we enter the age of AI, of electric mobility, of green hydrogen, of space and semiconductors, the case for our collaboration only becomes stronger. While doing so, we must also assess our relationship in the context of the state of the world. Whether it is the volatility of pandemics, climate events, conflicts, or coercion, there is a growing interest in forging more reliable and resilient supply chains. Similarly, the digital era requires 
trusted partners and secure data flows. When it comes to international peace and stability, those with shared values and convergent interests must collaborate in defense and security. Each of these considerations has a direct relevance to the future growth of our ties. So with those words, allow me to flag some specific points in regard to our relationship. One, as the ambassador told us, the seventh intergovernmental consultations in India is due to take place and will be particularly significant because it will provide directions at a very crucial time on key issues. Two, our trade currently at about uh, 30 billion euros annually and the mutual investment levels can surely do better. Changes in India and the easier business climate should serve as a motivation. Three, the 18th Asia-Pacific Conference of German Business, APK 2024, in New Delhi in October is therefore particularly important. Four, innovation and technology have to be given greater weight in our calculations. We need to think digital, AI, fintech, clean and green technologies. Five, defense cooperation must be given greater thought, especially as the Indian private sector expands in that domain. It will require export controls updating as well. We welcome the recent air exercises between India and Germany and await the impending ship visits to Goa. Six, our green and sustainable development partnership is making sure and steady progress. We have concluded 38 agreements to the tune of 3.22 billion euros. It only underlines the potential in this area, especially for green hydrogen and green ammonia. Seven, there are today 43,000 Indian students studying in Germany. And this, I understand, is uh, roughly double the number over the last five years. But the flow of talent could be very much higher, constituting the kind of living bridge that we have with the United States. This could be supplemented by understandings on skills mobility. Eight, and most important because it applies to us foreign ministers, we need close and continuous consultations on global issues. This is necessary to build the levels of trust and confidence which behoves our partnership. And this is what I expect to do with Foreign Minister Baerbock after this meeting. So, on that note, let me also share some thoughts about how we see the world today. There is no question that it is undergoing a profound shift, transitioning from the order that was fashioned after 1945. This is visible in an economic rebalancing accelerated by globalization. It is reinforced by the accompanying political consequences. There is a basis for today for talking about multipolarity, though this is still, in my view, work very much still in progress. From India's perspective, we see European Union and Germany as one of the key players in this emerging scenario. The strategic awareness that has perhaps grown in recent years in this region is therefore of considerable interest to us. At the same time, we must also recognize the reality of interdependence and the limitations of our particular respective national capabilities. In a globalized existence, instability anywhere has consequences everywhere. It is untenable, therefore, for major nations to limit their horizons. But to act on that, it is necessary to forge partnerships and understandings that is best done where there is comfort, where there is confidence, and where there is convergence. This is what we are seeking as we build between India and Germany a stronger relationship. And that is why we believe that Germany too should take greater interest in the Indo-Pacific, just as we in India seek to do in the Euro-Atlantic. Today, geopolitics, geoeconomics, and technology are driving us closer. How much we make of it depends on all of us. That is my message to you, and I would welcome your thoughts. Thank you very much.